summoning the poor goldsmith. It was not done for the king Sake. The reason is a mystery like Peter's cutting the boy's throat. Everything the doctor did was out of God's will. Peter sunk the boat, yet it was right to do. When someone is killed by a doctor like this one, it's a blessing, even though it might not seem so. A child cries at its first haircut, but not the mother. Such a doctor, 232, is part of a larger generosity. He takes away one and gives back a hundred. Don't judge his actions by what you will do. You are not living completely within truth as he is. The Three Brothers and the Chinese Princess There was a king who had three equally accomplished sons. Each was generous and wise, and fiercely decisive when the need arose. They stood like three strongly burning candles before their father, ready to set out on a journey to distant parts of his kingdom to see if they were being administered fairly and well. Each kiss the king's hand is a sign of farewell and obedience. Go wherever you are drawn to go, said the king, and dance on your way. You are protected. I only warn you not to enter one particular castle, the one called the fortress that takes away clarity. That castle has a gallery of beautiful pictures which causes great difficulty for the royal family. It's like the chamber Zulika decorated to trap Joseph, where her picture was everywhere. He could not avoid looking at her. Stay away from that one place. Of course, as it happens, the three princes were obsessed with seeing that castle, and in spite of their father's admonition they went into it. 233. It had five gates facing the land and five facing the ocean, as the five external senses take in the color and perfume of phenomena and the five inner senses open onto the mystery. The thousands of pictures there made the princes restless. They wandered the hallways drunkenly, until they came, all three at the same time, to stand before a particular portrait, a woman's face. They fell hopelessly in love. This is what our father warned us of. We thought we were strong enough to resist anything, as one who has vices thinks he's well enough to go on, but we're not. Who is this? A wise shape revealed to them, she is the Chinese princess, the hidden one. The Chinese king has concealed her as the spirit is wrapped in an embryo. No one may come into her presence. Birds are not even allowed to fly over her roof. No one can figure a way in. She can't be won by contriving. Give up on that. The princes put their heads together anyway, comrades in one sighing passion. The oldest said, we've always been bold when we gave counsel to others, but look at us. We used to say, patience is the key, but the rules we made for others are no help now. We advise, laugh, why are we so quiet? Where is our strength? In despair they set out for China, not with any hope for a union with the princess, but just to be closer to her. They left everything and went for the hidden beloved. They lived disguised in the capital, trying to devise some way into the palace. 234. Finally the eldest, I can't wait like this. I don't want to live if I have to live separated from the beloved. This is the one I've been beating the drum for my entire life. What does a duck care about a shipwreck? Just the duck's feet in ocean water is ship enough. My soul and my body are married to this boasting. I am dreaming but I'm not asleep. I brag but I do not lie. 
Light a candle, pass the night through my neck a hundred times, I'll burn just as brightly. The haystack of my existence has caught on both sides. Let it burn all night down to nothing. On the road the moon gives all the light I need. I'm going to confront the king. With my desire. His brothers tried to persuade him not to, but they couldn't. He sprang up and came staggering into the presence of the Chinese king, who knew what was happening, though he kept silent. That king was inside the three brothers, but he pretended to be unfamiliar with them. The fire under the kettle is the appearance. The boiling water is the reality. The beloved is in your veins though he or she may seem to have a warm outside you. The prince knelt and kissed the king's feet, and stayed there, bowed down. This young man will have everything he seeks, and twenty times that which he left behind. He gambled and flung off his robe in ecstasy. Such love is worth a thousand robes. 235. This one is an ambassador from that love, and he is doing his work well. The prince heard this and could not speak, but his soul spoke constantly with that soul. The prince thought, this is reality, this waking, this melting away. He stayed bowed down with the king a long time, looking. Execution is one thing, but I am being executed again and again every moment. Poor in wealth, but rich in lives to sacrifice. No one can play the game of love with just one head. This joyful waiting consumed the prince. The form of the beloved left his mind and he found union. The clothes of the body were sweet silk, but this nakedness is sweeter. This subject can go no further. What comes next must stay hidden. One rides to the ocean on horseback, but after that the wooden horse of mystical silence must carry you. When that boat sinks, you are the fish, neither silent nor speaking, a marvel with no name. So the oldest brother died, and the middle brother came to the funeral. What's this? A fish from the same sea. Who's the king? The chamberlain called out, a son of the same father, the brother next in age to the deceased. The king, yes, a keepsake from that one to me. So the sublime kindness is descended again, and the courtyard seems split apart like a pomegranate laughing, with all the forms. 236. Of the universe opening their tent flaps, new creations every second. He had read about such revelations in books. Now it was his. He kept saying, is there more? Is there more? Said from the king's nature, he felt a satisfaction he'd never felt before, and then there came a cry. Am I not also a king? The son of a king? Why is this one controlling me? I should open my own shop, independent of him. The king thought, I give you pure light, and you throw dirt in my face. The middle brother suddenly realized what he had inwardly done, but it was too late. His magnificence was stripped away. No longer a garden peacock, he flew like a lonely owl in the wilderness, like Adam plowing an ox far from Eden. He came to himself and asked forgiveness, and with his repentance he combined something else, the deep pain that comes from losing the union. This story must be shortened. After a year when the king came out of his own self-abasement, he found one arrow missing from his quiver and the middle brother dead, shot through the throat. The king wept, both slayer and chief mourner. Yet all is well.
The middle brother T had gone to the beloved for the killing I then blasted his conceit. It was the third brother, who had been ill up until now, who received the hand of the princess. He lived the marriage of form and spirit, and did absolutely nothing to deserve it. 237. 22. Green years everywhere. Children running through. On children running through. In China they tell of three laughing Taoist masters, who taught by going into town and standing in the marketplace and laughing. One of them died, people curious as to how the remaining two would act gathered at the funeral pyre. TLE other two masters had been given instructions not to prepare the body in any way, not even to change the clothes the dead man was wearing. He had crammed his pockets full of firecrackers. The teaching began again, Rumi's poems are like firecrackers on a funeral pyre. They won't allow much public posturing, and they point us away from misery. I used to be shy, you made me sing, I used to refuse things at table. Now I shout for more wine. In somber dignity, I used to sit on my mat and pray. Now children run through and make faces at me. 2. 32. Green years. There was a long drought. Crops dried up. The vineyard leaves turned black. People were gasping and dying like fish thrown up on shore and left there. But one man was always laughing and smiling. A group came and asked, Have you no compassion for this suffering? He answered, To your eyes this is a drought. To me, it is a form of God's joy. Everywhere in this desert I see green corn growing waist high, a sea wilderness of young years greener than leaves. I reached to touch them. How could I not? You and your friends are like Pharaoh drowning in the Red Sea of your body's blood. Become friends with Moses, and see this other river water. When you think your father is guilty of an injustice, his face looks cruel. Joseph, to his envious brothers, seems dangerous. When you make peace with your father, he will look peaceful and friendly. The whole world is a form for truth. When someone does not feel grateful to that, the forms appear to be as he feels. They mirror his anger, his grief, and his fear. Make peace with the universe. Take joy in it. It will turn to gold. Resurrection. Will be now, every moment, a new beauty. And never any boredom. Instead this abundant, pouring noise of many springs in your ears. 2319 The tree limbs will move like people dancing, who suddenly know what the mystical life is. The leaves snap their fingers like they're hearing music. They are, a sliver of a mirror shines out from under a felt covering. Think how it will be when the whole thing is opera to the air and the sunlight. There are some mysteries that I'm not telling you. There's so much doubt everywhere, so many opinions that say, what you announce may be true in the future, but not now. But this form of universal truth that I see says, this is not a prediction. This is here in this instant, cash in the hand. This reminds me of the sons of Uzair, who were out on the road looking for their father. They had grown old, and their father had miraculously grown young. They met him and asked, Pardon us, sir, but have you seen Uzair? We heard that he's supposed to be coming along this road today. Yes, said Uzair, he's right behind me. One of the sons replied, that's good news. The other fell on the ground. 
He had recognized his father. What do you mean you? We're already inside the sweetness of his presence. To your minds there is such a thing as news, whereas to the inner knowing, it's all in the middle of its happening. To doubters, this is a pain. To believers, it's gospel. To the lover and the visionary, it's life as it's being lived. The rules of faithfulness are just the door and the doorkeeper. 240. They keep the presence from being interrupted. Being unfaithful is like the outside of a free feeling. It's dry and bitter because it's facing away from the center. Being faithful is like the inside of the feeling, wet and sweet. But the place for feelings is the fire. The real inside is beyond, sweet, and bitter. It's the source of deliciousness. This can't be said, I'm drowning in it. Turn back, and let me cleave a road through water like Moses. This much I will say, and leave the rest hidden. Your intellect is in fragments, like bits of gold scattered over many matters. You must scrape them together, so the royal stamp can be pressed into you. Go here, and you'll be as lovely as Samarkand, with Central Market, or Damascus. Grain by grain, collect the parts. You'll be more magnificent than a flat coin. You'll be a cup of carvings of the king around the outside. Your friend will become bread and spring water for you, a lamp and a helper, your favorite dessert and a glass of wine. Union with that one is grace. Gather the pieces, so I can show you what is. That's what talking is for, to help us to be one. Meninas is having 60 different emotions. Unity is peace, and silence. I know I ought to be silent, but the excitement of this keeps opening my mouth as a sneeze or a yawn does. 241. Muhammad says, I ask forgiveness 70 times a day, and I do the same. Forgive me, forgive my talking so much. But the way God makes mysteries manifest quickens and keeps the flow of words in me continual. A sleeper sleeps while his bedclothes drink in the river water. The sleeper dreams of running around looking for water and pointing in the dream to mirages of water. There, there, it's the there, that keeps him asleep. In the future, in the distance, those are illusions. Taste the here and the now of God. This present first is your real intelligence, not the back and forth, mercurial brightness. Discursiveness dies and gets put in the grave. This contemplative joy does not. Scholarly knowledge is a vertigo, an exhaustive famousness. Listening is better. Being a teacher is a form of desire, a lightning flash. Can you ride to watch, far up the Oxus River, on a streak of lightning? Lightning is not guidance. Lightning simply tells the clouds to leap. Cry a little. The street lightning of our minds comes so that we weep and long for our real lives. A child's intellect says, I should go to school. But that intellect cannot teach itself. A sick person's mind says, go to the doctor, but it doesn't hear the patient. Some devils were sneaking up close to heaven trying to hear the secrets, when a voice came, get out of here. Go to the world, listen to the prophets, enter the house through the door. It's not a long way. You are empty reeds, but you can become sugar cane again, if you listen to the guide. 242. 
When a handful of dirt is taken from the hoof print of Gabriel's horse and thrown inside the golden calf, the calf flows. That's what the guide can do for you. The guide can make you live. The guide will take your falcon's hood off. Love is the falconer, your king. Be trained by that. Never say, or think, I am better than, whoever. That's what Satan thought. Sleep in the spirit tree's peaceful shade, and never stick your head out from that green. Bird song brings relief to my longing. I am just as ecstatic as they are, but with nothing to say. Please, universal soul, practice some song, or something, through me. The way of love is not a subtle argument. The door there is devastation. Birds make great sky circles of their freedom. How do they learn it? They fall, and falling, they're given wings. 243. Let your throat song be clear and strong enough to make an emperor fall full length, suppliant, at the door. I have phrases and whole pages memorized, but nothing can be told of love. You must wait until you and I are living together. In the conversation you'll have then, be patient, then. You so distracted me, your absence banned my love. Don't ask how. Then you come near, you not, I say, and, you not, you answer. Don't ask why this delights me. I'm not saying this right. You bind me, and I tear away in a rage to open out into air, around brightness, a candle point, all reason, all love. This confusing joy, your doing, this hangover, your tender thorn. 244. You turn to look, I turn. I'm not saying this right. I am a jailed crazy who ties up spirit women. I am Solomon, what goes comes back, come back, we never left each other. A disbeliever hides his belief, but I will say his secret. More and more awake, getting up at night, spinning and falling with love for shams. The least figure. I tried to think of some way to let my face become yours. Could I whisper in your ear a dream I've had? You're the only one I've told this to. You tilt your head, laughing, as if, I know the trick you're hatching, but go ahead. I am an image you stitch with gold thread on a tapestry, the least figure, a playful addition. But nothing you work on is dull. I am part of the beauty. I reach for a piece of wood. It turns into a loop. I do some meanness. It turns out helpful. I say one must not travel during the holy month. Then I start out and wonderful things happen. 245. 23 pi being woven. Communal practice. On being woven. There's a game that's remembered in Iran called Mashera, which means, being in company with poetry. One person says a line from Rumi, then the next person must begin a Rumi line with the word the first person ended with. And SG on for hours, I'm told, before television dead in the psyche, a family or a group of friends might continue. Rumi is not the only code news. It might be Hafiz, or Atar, or others. Poetry wove together the fabric of community and kept it lively. We have nothing comparable, except perhaps the nights of trading poems back and forth that sometimes happen in gatherings. In December of 1273 when Rumi died, representatives of every major religion came to his funeral. 
In the midst of the crusades and violent sectarian conflict he said, I go into the Muslim mosque and the Jewish synagogue and the Christian church and I see one altar. And he made it clear in other places that someone who considers religion or nation an important human category is in danger of severing the heart from its ability to act compassionately. This is a radical idea now, but Rumi held the conviction in the 13th century with such deep gentleness that its truth was recognized. A being woven. The way is full of genuine sacrifice. The thickets blocking the path or anything that keeps you from that, any fear that you may be broken to bits like a glass bottle. This road demands courage and stamina. 246. Yet it's full of footprints. Who are these companions? They are rungs in your ladder. Use them. With company you quicken your ascent. You may be happy enough going along, but with others you will get farther, and faster. Someone who goes cheerfully by himself to the customs house to pay his traveler's tax will go even more lightheartedly when friends are with him. Every prophet sought out companions. A wall standing alone is useless. But put three or four walls together, and they'll support a roof and keep the grain dry and safe. When ink joins with a pen, then the blank paper can say something. Brushes and reeds must be woven to be useful as a mask. If they weren't interlaced, the wind would blow them away. Like that, God paired up creatures, and gave them friendship. This is how the fowler and the bird were arguing about hermitic living in Islam. It's a prolonged debate. Usum, shorten their controversy. Make the mathemy more nimble and less lumbering. Agile sounds are more appealing to the heart's ear. The water wheel. Stay together, friends. Don't scatter and sleep. Our friendship is made of being awake. 247. The water wheel accepts water and turns and gives it away, weeping. That way it stays in the garden, whereas another roundness rolls through a dry riverbed looking for what it thinks it wants. Stay here, quivering with each moment like a drop of mercury. The granary floor. A Sufi was wandering the world. One night he came as a guest to a community of Sufis. He tied up his donkey in the stable and then was welcomed to the head of the dais. They went into deep meditation and mystical communion, he and these friends. For such people a person's presence is more to learn from than a book. A Sufi's book is not composed with ink and alphabet. A scholar loves, and lives on, the marks of a pen. A Sufi loves footprints. He sees those and stops his game. At first, he sees the clues. After a time he can follow the scent. To go guided by fragrance is a hundred times better than following tracks. A person who is opening to the divine is like a door to a Sufi. What might appear a worthless stone to others, to him a pearl. You see your image clearly in a mirror. A sheikh sees more than that in a discarded brick. Sufi masters are those whose spirits existed before the world. Before the body, they lived many lifetimes. Before seeds went into the ground, they harvested wheat. Before there was an ocean, they strung pearls. While the great meeting was going on about bringing 248 human beings into existence, they stood up to their chins in wisdom water. When some of the angels opposed creation, the Sufi shapes laughed and clapped among themselves. Before materiality, they knew what it was like to be trapped inside matter. 
Before there was a night ski, they saw Saturn. Before we grain, they tasted bread. With no mind, they thought. Immediate intuition to them is the simplest act of consciousness, what to others would be epiphany.